when you like what you're doing, I think, um, it makes a difference. And uh, I think most people that like what they're doing are probably better at what they do because they like it. You know, and uh, being around people that like what they're doing, uh, it's just a good environment, a good thing to, uh, it just, I think it builds success a lot of times. Uh, not just economic success, but, um, you know, things work. I fishing in 1973. I remember just started talking to the trollers and talking to people and uh, starting to learn and of course the lure of all the boats in the water there was really uh, really profound for a young boy and uh, um, it just was really neat. I uh, started fishing when uh, while well, working on the boat as a tender uh, when I was about eight years old and then we switched over to seining when statehood took away the fish trap. So 59 was the first year of sanding and been doing it ever since. Well, we all jumped in a truck one day and decided we were going to, actually I had a friend uh, fishing down in southern Texas there and uh, went down to uh, see him and when we got down there I, we drew straws because he had room for one more crewman on board and I won or lost and anyway I went out for 15 days, I got seasick for three days and the first three days and then after that I thought well this is pretty cool being out on the ocean catching fish and shrimp and and I kind of fell in love with the water right then and there. I got into the fishing business uh, I came up here one day and uh, started walking the docks and and talking to some skippers and eventually landed a job as a cook first off and, and uh, started fishing I finally met a guy, had a little boat and was just getting started and put me on and brought me up here. I spent the summer seining with him and I just thought it was awesome loading the boat with salmon and the way the salmon come in and, and uh, all the boats are loading up and it's pretty exciting, you know, with the, the competition between the boats, you know, even a couple of minutes, you know, make a difference, you know, in hauling the gear, you know, to beat another guy hauling gear and then run back to the set. and get the set out and it was just cool. I just loved every part. Everybody has a different role on the boat and everybody does their, takes care of their position, takes care of their, we have the deck boss, the engineer, uh, we've got a skiff driver, and a skipper, and a cook. So everybody performs their role. So on these boats, a lot of what happens is uh, is you just kind of get thrown into it as far as learning what's going on. You, you end up making your first set basically and, and figuring it out from that point on. So it's not, you don't, for the purse setting, you don't go through a whole lot of training or anything. You just kind of like jump into it and, they, and you figure it out as the gear comes spilling out of the block at you. And, and hardware, you know, there's a lot of hardware involved in the links between the lines and the net. and um, that hardware has to be in good shape, and uh, it's important, you know, like how those things are connected, and you minimize your risks in those ways. You can on your job specifically, like say, for instance, piling web, uh, and it's tough, and so it's hard for you to be aware of what else is going on around you, and that's very important in commercial fishing. You have to get to the point where. You know, you, you're constantly watching out, being paying attention to what else is. I think my biggest thing is uh, complacency, and that's what that's what gets a lot of people. Is you start you start getting a little bit lazy, and then you have thousands of pounds of pressure on all these lines that are going across the deck and and uh, going to the deck winch, going coming out of the power block, and uh, um, if you start getting lazy about it, you start not paying attention to what's going on and something happens and you get caught and stuck in a line and there's really nothing you can do about it, you know. There's, there's so much pressure on these hydraulic winches and stuff that you can't, you can't, there's no way you can overcome anything like that, you know. The winch is probably insaning, probably most people are the worst accidents other than sinking and drownings and people have gone down, but as far as working accidents have come from the wind. Accident waiting to happen because it wasn't functioning properly. The corner of my raincoat, about one inch, just the corner, caught under the cap. And it started here and went all the way up to here and then jammed me against the deck. 
and started to pull my arm off. And this all happened in seconds. Dislocated the elbow, for one thing, it smashed it. So that it was all dislocated. And then it broke, broke the bone here. And as it pulled around the winch, it uh, pulled the, the main uh, artery out. I um, really like the E-stop. We put it on if last had year. An emergency stop. This accident would have, would have never happened if if I'd have had that emergency stop right there where I could have uh, shut it off myself. It would have never happened. So, e stop would you know definitely be a good investment. Person, they don't have to go through what I did. It'd be wonderful. Uh, I wouldn't wish what happened to me on my worst enemy. Uh, it's just not good. And uh, bad things happen to good people. Victims never have a good day. And that just don't want to be one.